So when you really think about it, you assume that it's the stepping that causes the gait and the shortening gait and the shuffling and things, but actually it's your arms. If you really watch what's happening with that um, walking with the arms forward and things, and you really start looking at what's happening with the feet, you'll see the uh, connection in there. Or if one arm happens to be stuck, you'll notice if you just ho even hold your arm down that your feet are going to be affected. So what we need to do is work on arms. And one of the best things that we can do here is just a nice arm swing. But when you do your arm swing, place your feet about a foot, foot and a half apart. Look at a spot on the wall that is at eye height. And what I want you to do is swing your arms with the front arm kind of going toward that spot. Okay? Just keep your eyes on the spot. And notice when I'm doing this, what happens to my shoulders? I'm not swinging my arms like this with my shoulders stiff. I'm swinging my arms and you'll see that my torso actually turns slightly with that. It accommodates the forward arm by coming forward and the other arm by going to the back and allowing for a full swing. If you're stuck stiff like this, you're not going to get the full arm swing. If you don't have the full arm swing, you're not going to have that good long step. So you want to have a nice long arm swing. And that's about the rate that you want to be doing this. Keep practicing that arm swing. Make sure that you get it uh, with the big swing forward, reaching right toward that spot. And the back arm should accommodate, and you won't even have to think about it. Normally, I have uh, a screen up in front here so you don't see my big piece of furniture and you can really see what I'm doing. But I have to show you that you'll be wanting to hold something right here at whatever height is comfortable. But you need to have a countertop, you need to have a big heavy piece of furniture or a grab bar. Now what you're going to do is that same idea of holding the head forward and looking at a spot and you're going to swing that leg forward and back. Use the outer leg. Be comfortable and swing at approximately this rate. Keep your eyes on the spot. And make sure that you do an equal amount on one side. Then turn around and do it on the other leg. After you've done this, then we're going to combine that first exercise of the arm swing with the leg swing but we're only going to do it on one side, which means that you're going to swing that leg forward and back, eyes on the spot, and the arm will go in an opposite direction. This is a natural walking arm swing when we're taking a regular gait. You're going to want to try and do this smoothly and again, equal amounts on one leg and the other using the outer leg. So, keeping the eye up there, a nice easy arm swing. Now watch what happens when I swing my arm. I'm not trying to swing my leg any farther. The shorter my arm swing, the shorter my leg. And that's how it works. We're going to put them both together, arms and legs, and do it as a deliberate walk. When you do this, don't pound your feet at first. Think about your arms and get them going. Not too fast. Nice and easy. I have to turn around. But that also kind of gives you a better idea of what the arm swing looks like as I'm walking. Now, I want you to be very deliberate kind of demonstrative in your step as though you were angry. Get the arms up. Do it again. Begin by thinking where your feet are, then concentrate on your arm swing. Feel the steps. Now feel the arm swing. Now, how have you been walking? 
Have you been walking with your head down, looking at your feet? What happens when that happens? The shoulders come forward, the head is down, we have this, and your arms are forward. Notice I'm wearing black, but my arms are coming forward as I lean forward. With the arm forward, it can't go behind the body. The arm cannot go behind the body if we're forward. It just runs into the body. So if you're looking down at your feet, even if it's just slightly down, that's what's going to happen, is that your arm swing is going to shorten. So you can put a little bright sticky on your toe, and if you see your toe, then you know that you are uh, looking down at your feet. Now you think that you're doing this and that you're safer by walking and looking down. Not so. Where's my center of gravity when I'm doing this? My center of gravity is forward. That means that I'm actually much more likely to fall. You've got your hands psychologically right here ready to fall. And it's just, it's just putting you in a worse position. Being forward, you want that center of gravity up. Crack a walnut between your shoulder blades if you need to in order to get those shoulders where you want them. If you have that happening, this walk is what's going to happen. You're going to be walking like this and there's no way that that will let you take a big step unless you see what happens. I have to be doing this with my knees. So you want to be up and you want to be able to have that natural arm swing. A lot of people with Parkinson's, I have the stiff arm and sometimes with that stiff arm will come one arm pulling in more than the other. What happens here is that we get an off gait. You're also off balance a little bit, but you get an off gait. You can't, again, you can't take uh, a good solid forward and back stride with that. So you have to be thinking of the arm swing. If you need to, think pinchy winchy and pinch something in front if that's what you need to do in order to uh, get the arm swing big. Just take a pinch, 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 as though you're trying to pinch somebody who's in front of you. Another thing that happens with the shoulders forward is that sometimes it'll start to swing them this way. Watch what happens to my feet if I'm swinging my arms side to side. They start to cross. You don't want that because of course you've got Parkinson's and you're already unbalanced and you don't want to have any problem with tripping or on an uneven surface. You want to make sure that those feet are in a natural stance position. You've wondered why I call this thumbs up. And that's, we, we're finally getting to that. And that is that when you do an arm swing, you can have your thumbs in. I'm going to stand here so that you can see that with the black. And when you naturally have your hands comfortable, come up here, you see that the arms and the hands, let's see if I turn that one, that the thumbs are kind of inward. But if I turn them outward just that much, not to this point, but turning them so that they're up, that's going to alleviate a lot of problems. And I'm going to show you what I mean. If I walk naturally without this big arm swing we've been talking about, but I walk naturally with the thumbs in, look where my step is. It's, it looks pretty natural. But now what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn my thumbs upward and slightly out. And my step really doesn't even come close to itself. Now I tried this when I was running. And that's what I really noticed was when I was running was that my feet were drawing in if I was running naturally. See how I almost go across? But as soon as I took my thumbs and put them forward or put them out, my feet didn't cross at all. So I started really practicing this to see if that helped with the, the Parkinson's walking and with the gait and cadence, and by golly, there it was. So when you're doing this, let's take and just practice 
that big arm swing that we were talking about, looking at the spot, having your feet slightly apart, and swinging, arm swing, arm swing, arm swing, with your thumb up. Now let's add it in that deliberate walk, making sure that the thumb is up. You can even try this with the thumb out and see what happens. And by doing it with the thumb out, you may want to continue to try doing it uh, when you're out on a long walk or something like that, you know, a long area, so that you can go in, up, out, and so forth, and feel what happens with your gait. I was amazed. Now, one other thing, leaving you here for a moment, Nordic walking is, is gaining popularity and they're really, really showing that Nordic walking is wonderful for people with Parkinson's. But why is it wonderful? Well, I just went down to the second hand store, got myself a couple of nice ski poles, and had my husband tear the ends off. Walking sticks have a grip. Some of them break down, make them real portable so that you can put them in a purse or a backpack or something, and then you can extend them. Walking sticks I've always recommended because they are stable on both sides. Instead of just using the cane and doing this, you have this business which keeps you stable. You can use walking sticks and carry a backpack or a little fanny pack, and you can still go and perhaps open doors and things like that if you were shopping uh, or just going around and you needed to stop and tie your shoe. But I started watching the Nordic walking, and it's pretty interesting. Now, I'm going to show this to you in the house. Unfortunately, these slide on something that is uh, really slick if I use them properly for Nordic walking. People often use them for stability and walking and trekking poles like this. Good idea, but that's not Nordic walking. Nordic walking, instead of having the poles here, have the poles behind you and you actually, I'm running into furniture here, and you actually drag them behind you and let them catch and then you're pushing back. You think that the activity is going to be the arm swing forward. It isn't. It's a pushing back. Well, when you push back with these things, it forces your arms up as you walk. It's pretty interesting. But also notice, you have your thumbs more or less up you can't see that too well there, but you have your thumbs more or less up because of your grip, and you can't cross your feet because if you cross your feet, you're going to kick poles, and the poles are drug behind you, which helps keep the feet in line with each other. It's wonderful. I really, really recommend it. I tried these out on our high school track. They slipped quite a bit, even though it was an asphalt track, and that kind of surprised me. But I got out on the football field instead, and boy, I could really go to town. It makes you really swing those arms, and you don't even have to think about it after a while. It's pretty cool. Uh, I really recommend going online and Google some Nordic walking videos so that you can get the real uh, concept of this. Why don't you join me on Facebook? I have these exercises written out, and of course, there's a whole lot more.